Hi everybody and welcome to a June update on Blackwood Engage Layout. I, since the last video I put up, what, three, four weeks ago, I, first of all, I've cleared all the junk that I had sitting uh, where the retail park uh, is going to be. I've uh, built one of three Metcalf kits. I, if I just zoom in there, that's just been built as standard. And what I'm going to probably do is build uh, the other two kits, but I'm probably going to kit bash them. So rather than just sitting in a straight line, three kits in a straight line, I'm going to see if I can put them at an angle, um, one on either side of uh, the kit that uh, the camera's currently pointing at. Uh, the area, uh, the tarmac area, that's still to be painted, that's uh, not been done yet. Uh, on this side here, I have painted um, the uh, ground cover at the back of the retaining wall. It's just been painted in with some um, brown poster paint. The other section there that you can still see, that's obviously uh, requires to have the sandpaper put down, 600 grit sandpaper then painted, that's for the road surface. Haven't done anything more uh, really to, to this side at all. Uh, so. I've cleared, as I say, uh, the top area there uh, so I can build the retail park. Uh, but what I have been doing is obviously the last um, update was very much on the track uh, detail down this section uh, the camera's currently pointing at. Uh, but as I pan round here where the um, Class 350 EMU is sitting, I, as you can see, that triangular um, curved section of ground has now all been scenic up and as you can see there the piece de resistance in this section is a communication mast uh, which is sitting in a small compound now uh, if I come out a little bit uh, very slowly you get an idea of the size of this mast I, that mast is from a company called N Scenic uh, the mast or the kit itself is probably one of the easiest kits you'll ever have to build. It's um, laser cut, uh, comes in a fret. All you really have to do is probably give a spray with some uh, grey primer. Um, let that dry, doesn't take very long to dry and then simply uh, release the, um, the actual structure from the, the, the fret. Uh, and it basically just folds uh, around itself uh, and then there are uh, discs and uh, other bits and pieces um, for the actual antennae that you can then actually put in uh, at, the, at the top uh, of the actual tower. So I'm really actually quite pleased uh, with this bit. Uh, the, the area that has been scenic, that is was the original layout. It was never ever seen before because I really couldn't think of uh, what I wanted. Uh, but um, it is now, as you can see, it's done heavily with bushes, etc. Um, and it's actually quite good when you look from the other side. Uh, the trains tend to disappear behind the bushes when they're coming on this uh, link line uh, that is, comes out from underneath the road bridge and then uh, curves round. Um, to the other bridge, um, the trains do tend to uh, obviously disappear. Putting us, I think uh, I can just probably pick it out there. I've got in the speed restriction signs. Uh, that's five miles an hour, and that's obviously because there is a siding on the other side of that uh, road bridge. Uh, the catenary has been uh, installed as well along uh, this bit. There's a few tiny bits of uh, um, ground cover still to go in. Uh, along the wall section, but in the main, it's actually now uh, complete. Uh, so that's this side of the bridge, uh, quite substantially completed in terms of the scenics um, at track level. Uh, and really, it's just the retail park and as I come round, the uh, road bridge uh, and the road continuing over there. And something obviously needs to be sat in this area here, which I've not yet decided what that's going to be. So turning to this side of um, the uh, bridge, uh, I have started um, to uh, 
join in or blend in the scenery on the left hand side track uh, between the track and uh, the small signal box that you see there there was a very very narrow strip of bare baseboard there because when these two tracks here uh, were put in they sit slightly further over than the original tracks so it left a very narrow strip so most of the scenery uh, that you're looking at here is from the original layout uh, but I was obviously uh, concerned that when I came to blend this in that, uh, that anything I put in sort of you know um, blended in um, and didn't make this new area sort of stick out um, from the rest of the actual layout uh, and I think I've managed to achieve that um, uh, relatively well I've started from, if I come back round here, you'll see the small area there, um, you can see what I was talking about. So you can see in this area here, um, th there's the original um, scenery, uh, there's where it ended. The original tracks ran along where my finger is and they've obviously now moved out. So that was like that all the way along. So as you can see, I've um, put in, first of all, there's a uh, cable trunking has gone in. Uh, here which wasn't there before um, there's obviously new uh, speed restriction signs that I've put in uh, we've got relay boxes with obviously the safety railing uh, to protect uh, any track workers working on it I've put on some of these new uh, Martin Welberg um, uh, tufts and small bushes in there um, and then that comes up uh, and again uh, there's new relay boxes the figurines or the, or the figures I should say they were obviously further back and they've all been moved they've all been given new jobs <laughs> uh, again there's more of that uh, yellow tubular um, safety fencing uh, in there uh, just at the signal box and then as we come along um, the gap actually gets slightly wider so at the moment I've got a bit of real lying there there's going to be other bits and pieces i'm going to fill in there but again there's uh, more uh, relay boxes and again with the safety fencing and then on the bridge itself there is the restricted uh, clearance sign um has been put on to the 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 abutment of the bridge um again point uh, dummy point motors uh, you can see they've been put in uh, you'll also pick out the ubiquitous orange cable trunking uh, which obviously will allow cabling to carry on from the trunking because there's trunking on this side of the track as well um, there's also the blue drainage catch pits and then just on here you're just catching it um, this was obviously flat baseboard well there is now a, a small hill um, as you can see if I zoom right out you can get an idea of um, the hill that runs basically from uh, the scale scenes bridge and it comes right the way down it's quite low uh, I didn't want a high hill here because I want to be able to take uh, camera shots of trains coming through uh, any of these bridges here uh, coming towards uh, me so in the old layout there was quite a high backboard uh, which meant that you couldn't really do that so I don't want to have that this time round so it's uh, quite a low um, gentle uh, slope um, at the bridge end there is a rock face that's the the grey that you can see there it's not finished and uh, that's just a, a base coat I've put on uh, but there is a, a, a rock face the other thing is that road bridge the scale scenes road bridge it still lifts out um, I'm not going to have it permanently fixed because uh, I've found quite often that when I've been working there uh, just actually uh, removing the road bridge does give you a hell of a lot more room and there are two points that sit underneath the road bridge so if I needed to get access to do any work to the points it would be great just to be able to lift that bridge out um, so I'm actually quite pleased that the bridge um, is, is able to be uh, lifted out um, and that's in terms of scenery work that's where I've got to and that's what I said originally that what I would want to do would be to try and complete the scenery uh, at this end um, of these lines coming out of the, the helix which you see just on the right hand side there and I would then uh, carry on uh, reintegrate these new lines in with the existing layout which are, is coming along progressing along 
Uh, as far as you're aware, um, this part obviously uh, hasn't been done yet and the reason that's not been done is because the track, if I come around here, um, you'll see the track in the, the foreground, uh, well, or rather this track that I'm pointing to here, that's where uh, there's going to be a bit of um, a bit of a track change. So at the moment, um, this is the link line that comes from the existing layout and joins on to the new uh, helix lines. Uh, it's quite short, as you can see, it just runs from this point down to that point. So what's going to happen is this point is going to come out. This track here uh, will run uh, and follow the line of this track, go through under the bridge and uh, the access um, from the existing layout, which is this line here, instead of being here, will be away up at the other bridge uh, where the station building is sitting. So that will mean that uh, the link line here, instead of being short, it will actually be considerably longer, uh, which will allow me to probably actually hold some trains. So I'll be able to actually run trains off from the helix lines into that sort of holding line because it, it, at the moment that line um, does uh, have uh, an isolated section in it. So I'll be able to shut the power off, keep the train in there, um, either bring another train up uh, from uh, the lower fiddle yard uh, or if I'm having to clear trains from the existing layout into the, the old fiddle yard then uh, it, it gives me that opportunity and I think it will give them um, some quite good uh, running shots. The one other thing I did have to do over the last day uh, two to three weeks, all centred around, if I come in, this point here. Now, as I said, I was putting on the dummy fish plates. I was not fish plates, the dummy point motors. And I, unfortunately, I managed to slice off the end of the plastic tie bar where the metal pin from the solenoid point motor uh, latches onto. Now, obviously there's a uh, two sides of where the solenoid point motor can obviously latch on to uh, either side of the tie bar on the point. Uh, so although the other side was absolutely fine, underneath, because of the baseboard framing, I can't move the point motor. So I had no option but to <laughs> dig out because the point was obviously all ballasted. I had to carefully remove the existing point and I then had to buy a completely brand new point, uh, which which you can see is now installed uh, onto the, the layout. Um, so schoolboy error there, uh, I, I shouldn't have done it. It was late at night, uh, I'd been working had quite a long day. My wife did warn me that uh, I'd probably go and make an error if I went out uh, to do anything in the layout and let everything else, she was proved right. So um, that cost me uh, a new point at the princely sum of uh, 17 pounds. The point that has come out is not wasted because, as I've just explained about the new track formation, that point will actually serve as the new off point from the existing layout. And the good thing is that where the point motor will go in that, it's actually the other side, so it's the part of the, the tie bar that's, that wasn't cut off. So I will actually still be able to uh, use the point. Um, so it's, it's, it's not all, all doom and gloom. But that's where I've got to um, on terms of the scenery work over the last two to three weeks. So just to very quickly sum up, uh, cleared all the rubbish off where the retail park is, built the first retail unit, got another two retail units which I'm going to try and kit bash, um, and then obviously that top area has got to be uh, finished off. The track detail on the far side of the road bridges where the retaining walls are, that's mostly finished. Uh, there's just odd wee bits and pieces, but it's, it's probably well over 90% complete. We've I've put in the um, end scenic um, um, communication mast, which is a, a focal point for that uh, triangular bit. I was really pleased about getting that triangular bit all done uh, because I really, over the years, never really thought um, as to what was actually going to go in there. And then obviously on this side of the road bridge, uh, we've put in the, the low embankment here 
uh, and then on the other side just tying in um, the very narrow part of um, the, the, the ground cover uh, to the existing layout and then obviously installing the point motors. So that's a kind of brief summary of, of where we've got to. Um, obviously um, next job will be to um, put on the grasses onto this embankment um, so that will again will change the whole look of the layout when that's done and obviously the actual retail park. Once I've done that I will then sort of stop work on the scenic section and my attention will turn to um, track laying again and obviously carrying out um, the changes to um, the link from the existing layout uh, back onto these um, uh, uh, helix lines. So uh, thanks everyone for watching and what I've now got for you is probably uh, not too bad a, a running session with quite a number of the trains coming up through the helix and also trains running on the, the, the old existing layout so I hope you enjoy that. So um, that's all from me and I will catch you all uh, very very soon uh, in the next update on Blackwood Engage Layout.